Hi all, my name is Renat Strunges and this is the second video about the laziness. We all know that sometimes laziness leads us to trouble and Haskell is no exception in that regard. The lazy strategy has its own drawbacks and one of the main ones is memory consumption. To understand the problem we should talk a bit about how Haskell generates and stores evaluated terms. A central concept here is thunk. A thunk is a value that has not yet been evaluated. It contains, in special form, instruction on how to compute an actual value. I'm not going to focus on the fact that usually a function gets a link to a thunk for sharing computations. Thunks are born and disappear during computations. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here we reduce an application of function OR to two arguments. Reducing it, we form a thunk with an application of OR to Y and Z. Y and Z could also be thunks in a common case. Whether these external thunks are reduced or not uh, depends on the instruction inside our main thunk. Application of the function OR requires reducing at least one of its arguments to get an actual result. Imagine that the value of the first argument is true. It means that the result does not depend on the second argument at all. Therefore, it would never be reduced. This approach to the computations looks very attractive. It doesn't waste our, our CPU power for nothing. It makes it possible to easily use infinite structures. So, why the most popular computational order is still strict? One of the main disadvantages is memory consumption. First, a thunk usually has a larger size than an already computed value. Second, sometimes reducing a computation could create, of course temporally, a huge number of thunks. Suddenly, every, even a very simple functions could lead to eating all the available memory. For example, Let's define a function that gives us a sum of numbers in a list. It sums numbers using an accumulator. How is list sum prime reduced if it's applied to a list of numbers from 1 to 100 of millions? Let's do a few initial steps. First, a thunk with the application of the function to the list and zero is created. When we follow the instruction, inside the thunk. We replace our first application with an application to the list without its head and a sum of the zero and the head of the list. Look at the right side of the list sum prime. But its second argument is now also a thunk. It has been created by the application of plus to zero and one. And do we really need to reduce it now? No, we can reduce the main thunk without getting the result of this sum. We just need to apply the function ag again to different arguments. And now we have a new thunk, list sum prime, applied to the list without its first two elements, and to another thunk, a sum of two and the result of our first and still unevaluated sum. With every further step, a thunk representing our accumulator will grow. I tried uh, this example on my laptop with 16 GB of RAM and got the out of memory error. Of course, in an ideal world where all the computers have an infinite amount of memory, all the thunks that don't lead to an exception would be someday reduced up to their actual value. But until this dream becomes a reality, we need to take the size of memory needed into account. 
even for intermediate steps of calculation process. For this example, there is a simple solution. Evaluate a sum in the accumulator in every, at every step. But how do we do this? Fortunately, Haskell has a lot of instruments to rule an evaluation order in a very flexible way. But now I need to preface the following discussion of set instruments by saying they only force evaluation up to the weak head normal form. But what is the weak head normal form? An expression in weak head normal form has been evaluated up to the outermost data constructor or lambda abstraction, the head. Sub-expressions may or may not have been evaluated. Therefore, every fully evaluated expression is also in weak head normal form. It means that unlike the normal form, which cannot be reduced further, the weak head normal form is usually a partially reduced expression. In the first example, underscores denote thanks, and we know that it's a non-empty list. I also should mention here that polymorphic functions are also not in weak head normal form until they are not fed by specific types. Let's explore some of these instruments. The first one is a sec function. It evaluates its first argument and returns the second one. The second one is the strict application operator. It evaluates its second argument and then applies the first one to the result of the evaluation. With this operator, we can easily improve the memory consumption of our sum list function by orders of magnitude by evaluating the accumulator at every step. To use the next instrument called bank patterns, we need to enable the corresponding language extension. Bank patterns let us force the evaluation of an expression bound to, the, to a name. In our example, function strict FST evaluates y and returns x. Another way to add strictness to our Haskell life is called strict fields. When you define your own data type, you may add an exclamation point in front of a field type. And when the data constructor is applied, those fields will be evaluated to weak head normal form. It guarantees that data in this field will always be in weak head normal form. Finally, we have two extensions, strict data and strict. The first one turns all the fields of data types defined in the module into strict fields. One can make a specific field lazy by adding tilde in front of the field. The second one makes all binds in the module strict. It's an equivalent to putting an exclamation point before every outermost pattern of all pattern matches in the module. But is there a way to see the structure of a thunk? If we would try to print something, it would be immediately evaluated to a showable form. But yes, there is an instrument that allows everyone to play with thunks. And I strongly advise every nov novice Haskeller to play with this tool. I'm talking about sprint command in GHCI. It prints an expression without evaluating it. Let's start with a very simple example. Just define a new binding x. Before we calculate the sum, which is required to print the number, sprint command just shows us x as a thunk. But why do we need to enable the extension here? That's due to using polymorphic functions. Polymorphic functions and values still wait for specific types. For example, to choose proper instances, over type class and define how exactly the runtime system should add 1 and 2 because the addition is a member of the num class. This extension enables the implicit substitution of unknown types with a default one for the specific type class and turns our terms to be monomorphic. In a more complex example, we define a tuple and remember our strict FST function. Let's apply it to tuple. What do we see after printing a result with the sprint command? We see that the first element 
has been fully evaluated because it was necessary for printing. And the second argument is also evaluated, but only up to the weak head normal form because of the bank pattern. In conclusion, I'd like to say to probably every novice Haskeller, don't overuse these instruments. I know that lazy evaluation order is very unfamiliar to you, and it's sometimes hard to understand what's going on in complex cases. But don't be afraid of it. Try to understand lazy evaluation and use strictness only where you understand it to be necessary and why it's so. In the next video, I would like to talk about what is a normal form and how to force an expression to be fully evaluated. What are the problems of lazy input and output and how to solve performance problems by profiling your program. I also want to say that if you are interested in a deeper understanding of laziness and its implementation in GHC, then I suggest you to watch another video from our channel made by Jochen Breitner. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos about functional programming, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. Goodbye!